Hello, podcast world. Welcome to the big celebration of FNO InsureTech's 50th episode. And they said it couldn't be done. In fact, a lot, of, a lot of people still say it can't be done. That's true. After listening to many of our episodes. If, if you're looking for proof of whether it can be done or not, listen to our episodes, and I think you'll be convinced one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. Con congratulations, Rob. Man, well, thank very you. Thank time. you. And we are here today, uh, Rob Beller here with um, the other um, usual suspects from our podcast, Matt Fothery and Lee Boyd. Hi there. Hi, Hi. Rob. Hey, guys. Isn't this so exciting? It is. I <laughs> never, ever thought this would ever happen. I so not even a little bit. Excited but... beyond belief, actually. They yeah. said it couldn't be done, folks. Yeah. They said it couldn't be done. They're and, still saying it. <laughs> and so just just uh, let's let's uh, take a little look back here. Let's go back in time. One day, I'm having a conversation with Matt Fothery, and he's telling me all about influencers at um, his other side hustle that he has, the Findry in Waco, Texas. And it was about it was about this time last year, I think. It was about a yeah. year ago. Maybe yeah. actually it was a little more than that, but yeah. Um it was like summer. But do you remember that conversation and you telling me about what a what an influencer is? Absolutely. On Instagram. It took a, it took a lot of explaining, but uh, I think you finally got it. So well I think you might actually be considered maybe a little bit of an influencer now. I don't know. Hashtag, we'll debate on that in the next few minutes here. Hashtag so. influencer. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we'll have a, let's have an online poll about that. <laughs> yeah. But during that time, I do remember thinking how in the world does Rob not know what an influencer is? Well, you know, I'm a little slow to the party sometimes, guys. What can I say? But I did learn that there's all these people out there. It, we were talking about Instagram at the time. And who, well, why don't you tell us real quick what an influencer is in, in, in the findry world? Uh, well, an influencer down there is, uh, you know, could potentially in, is our customer, but it's basically somebody that has a very unique and large following on Instagram and, and really pushes, uh, you know, products and, and, you know, goes into stores like ours and develops a relationship and then kind of helps us co-market, um, uh, throughout that. And, uh, it's kind of taken even in a year, a lot of different uh, shapes and forms, but uh, it's it's a very interesting piece of the marketing puzzle on the retail side now. So very dynamic, to say the least. right? Very dynamic, changing all the time. The rule. super dynamic, and I think even now they don't call themselves influencers. It's like two other names now, and it kind of has changed a couple times. So I, I don't even know what their technical term is anymore right now. That's kind of a whole nother world that, that I don't have to deal with much. <laughs> so thank goodness. So the thought was, is that, um, we're, we, we, as many of you know, we work for 470 and, um, we're, we're all involved in that for a living and 470 is a claim management company. And so part of our job, our regular day work and led by Lee, mostly on this is to focus on what are the new technologies that are emerging in our, in our world, in our insurance world that, um, are important to us. It, it, am I saying that rightly? Yeah, absolutely. You are. I mean, we wanted, uh, and when we do all the time, we want to be able to talk about what's out there, what are the trends, and, and that's what this podcast is really all about. Right. So we, we, I found us talking about insurance stuff all the time, or talking about insure tech stuff all the time, talking about different tools, mostly focused on the claim side and what we, we did. But the deeper we got into it, we kind of discovered that it's this vast world and there weren't a lot of people talking about it in the, in, in the world of podcasts. And so right. we thought, huh. Maybe here's an opportunity to kind of take, to share, to give something back even to, to our industry. 
Yeah. And that's what I, I hope we've done. You know, we've been to many conferences. We've talked to many people who said, Hey, thanks for that podcast on so-and-so or about such and such, uh, because we were able to actually do something with that information. And I'm, that's what always makes me happy is whenever we're able to talk to, to customers and, and clients and, and people in the field, whenever they say that they got something out of our podcast, it really excites me uh, to know that that's, that's being done. Yeah, I would agree. I think it, it's viewed as a, you know, opening minds kind of thing. And uh, it's been super interesting to see the journey. I mean, you guys have been carrying more of the load than I have. It's been super intriguing to see it unfold. And and it's almost like a little time capsule every week too of technology and, and the insurance carrier and, and where they are in that place at that given time. So it's even been interesting from the first few episodes to now and how companies have changed or developed through that. It's 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 got a lot of dimensions to it. Yes. Which is really fun to to see develop. And I think there's a lot more too. Yes. You know, I think about all the things we've learned from it. Uh, we really have learned a lot, uh, especially early on. I think about some of the uh, key phrases that, that we learned. We visit with a lot of carriers. And uh, one of the lessons that we learned was uh, whenever a technology company is going to a carrier, you have to find out what the problem is you're trying to solve. Right. Don't just show up at the door, understand, talk to the carrier, talk to the customer. What is the problem? But then it also goes back to the to the carrier or the client. Know your problem. Don't just uh, think that there's a neat, shiny new technology out there you want to use. Understand what is the problem that you're trying to solve. I think that was a real big takeaway early on. Yeah, that, that uh, takes me back to the Alyssa Hunt episode. Right. And, exactly. And yeah. Alyssa Hunt shared a story about her process, basically for for InsureTech, um, how InsureTech influences their business and and vice versa. And she said that the first thing that she does is she goes out to people in her organization and talks about what are the problems that you're having. Yeah. And we've heard that time and time and time again. Yeah. She said InsureTech is is a tool to solve problems, right? That's exactly what it is. And and adding on to that, a second lesson learned that's tied in with that is that whenever you are making these decisions, when you are talking to new technology companies or a technology company is talking to a carrier, make sure you have the right people in the room, right? Make sure you have decision makers in there. Uh, make sure that they all understand the problems that need to be solved. I think that's a really important lesson that I learned. It's interesting to see how it's unfolded this year because, you know, our our industry and especially our niche niche is pretty closed as far as information and sharing. It seems it's more closed than open, but it seems to me, you know, we've been able to break through some of those barriers and uh, been able to draw some of the communication out from not only the insurance carriers, but the technology carriers. And it seems like some of that protectiveness, privacy, confidentiality has been broken down a little bit. And the sharing of ideas is a good thing in our industry. Right. And you certainly don't have to give away trade secrets, but I think people need to talk and, and listen to what's out there, right? Absolutely. Well, I'll say this, and I'm not being mean at all, but we've had several different kinds of guests on. We've had founders of insure tech companies and even non-insure tech companies. We've had innovators. We've had thought leaders. We've had people who run conferences like Caribou Honig, venture capital firms, venture capital people, incubators, etc. The hardest people to get on the podcast without a doubt are people from carriers, right? Yeah. That's the number one most challenging. As a group, we've probably had on the fewest from carriers, but those have been great episodes, important episodes. We've had, you know, we've had Adam Kostecki, Alyssa Hunt, and Dan Moore, people that are willing, like you're saying, Matt, people that are willing to share without giving away the family jewels. Sure, sure. Well, and I think it's difficult. I mean, look at look at some of the technical issues we have. And, and legal issues. I mean, sometimes we have to go through legal departments, through through companies. The technical side of getting through these firewalls to be able to to match up audio. I mean, it's been real challenging, and uh, I'm sure y'all have a lot of stories about some of those that you know. I know we've tried two, three, four times for for episodes to go off, and it's even technically challenging to get through some of the security and stuff. 
I think it's really important to have the carriers on to understand their thoughts, to understand where they want to go. Because in the world of insured tech, they're the ones who are a lot of times buying this technology. They're paying the bills. They're paying the bills. They're not necessarily pushing insured tech out there, but they're the ones who are accepting it. Uh, and so I enjoy talking to them. I think about Cat Reese, right, with with Tower Hill and how they're using technology. It's a very interesting discussion about what's good, what's not. I, you know, I, I think back on all of those. Uh, even Tony Triola, we talked with him about future state a little bit and things that are coming and and things that he thinks are going to be in the future. Well, that just allows the insure tech industry to know where it's going and to give it more of a path to follow. You know, one of the really important early episodes that we did was with Ali Safavi from Plug and Play. Right. Plug and Play is an accelerator out of Silicon Valley, working in a bunch of verticals and in tech, one of them. And in fact, Ali's not even, I don't think he's there anymore. He's moved on. He's now involved in a startup himself. Ali kind of explained to us early on the ecosystem that exists around InsureTech. We were just in one, we were just in one piece of that ecosystem, and we had to kind of learn that there's, you know, venture capitalists, there's accelerators, so there's basically a whole ecosystem that's been built to support it and to help it along and to move it forward. Right. You know, I had I had actually forgotten about the ecosystem. I know we talked about it for several episodes there because it was such a new concept to us, um, and you know, there's. We've since found that there are companies out there uh, to help you navigate through this ecosystem mm -hmm. that these mm -hmm. insurance companies are using uh, certain companies right. uh, that like that'll Rev really, One, like, like Rev One, that can mm -hmm. that can vet potential partners that can help you really focus on where you need to be. And mm -hmm. I think I, I had no idea that even existed. And now we find out that it's not only in America, but it's it's over in England and other parts of uh, Asia. You know, there's all these companies that will help you find your way in this world of venture tech. So one of the things that impressed me and been a big thing to learn, as simple as this may sound, is that the world of venture tech is vast. It is enormous. Right. And it's made up of all these pieces and parts. Like we had a, the interview with Dan Reed, who leads the corporate venture capital team at American Family. This is an organization that was built inside of an insurance company, inside of American Family, or maybe it's a, attached to it. And its purpose is to find and invest in insure tech companies who can either help them, their product helps American Family, or maybe just invest in them to make money. It's just, it, it just goes on and on and on. And the number of little insure tech companies, it feels on some days, it feels like there's no end to it, right? Yeah. I was thinking about all the technology companies that we visited with, you know, there's so many out there and I've really enjoyed uh, getting to speak with many of them. You know, we have our staples in the industry, right? Our exact wares. We talked to Mike Fulton and our Symbilities. We talked to James Swayze and Pascal Begin. I mean, really helping us lead this this transformation on insured tech within uh, property claims. But we've had some really innovative companies like Hover and Planner uh, who have really been able to come in and, and disrupt the way that business is done now. Hover, who has really changed the way that measurements are done. You know, no longer do we have to have our tape measures and spend hours taking detailed measurements. Hover's come in and disrupted that. Uh, and then planner with the same thing with the interior. Uh, I've really enjoyed getting to see that and those people who are, you know, prodding along and, and pushing along to make all of us better at what we do. That's a really good point is the amount of innovation from all different points. Matt, we, we had a fun field trip that one day. We did. Austin, Texas. I mean, I, I, of course, the most memorable part was maybe the barbecue. That was, um, you went large that, uh, that day. I, I, I'm still mm -hmm. digesting that, but, but seriously, I mean, we, we got to visit with, uh, Darren McCarthy at, at Hippo and that's an insure tech. Absolutely. Right? That, that looks a lot like an insurance company to me. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it was, uh, it was a, it was an impressive interview and they had an impressive office and, uh, you see their name 
popping up more and more as as they gain traction in the in the in the industry. It's uh, that was a that was a great in- interview. Yeah, you you had a lot of barbecue. In fact, I think you took a nap on the way back up to Waco that day in the car. I believe that. Uh, so, but you know, we're not. You know, it's off the record. In fact, my eyes are closing just <laughs> thinking about that. Hey, meal. hey, what about what about the intersection of all these companies? Right, we interviewed Kangaroo uh, not too long ago, and mm-hmm. they were talking about mm-hmm. how they're working with Hippo. We've talked with Notion, and they're working with Hippo, right? And then we've talked to mm-hmm. uh, WeatherCheck, uh, how they're working with certain companies. And it's neat to see how the world is really intersecting and gaining traction by leveraging each other's tools and each other's platforms. I, I was just reading something the other day that today the word that you hear is partnership. And it's a it, we've laughed a lot about the term partnership in the past because we've had people say to us, "So oh, this is a partnership." <laughs> right. As long as you do, as long as you do exactly what we say, it's a partnership. Right. But um, in the in this world, partnership is critical. It's everything because it's uh, many of these insure techs aren't a solution. They're not an end to end solution. It's not like it's not like a claimant department can go out and buy one product, right. and that's all they need to run. They're buying. They're they're using several parts and pieces, and so you need partnerships to effectively navigate that. Yeah, and everybody has to be able to work within that ecosystem to do their part. And a lot of companies are realizing what they do, uh, and and they want to do it great. You know, I think about High Marley and how they are working with partnerships with carriers and other technologies right. to deliver a really unique uh, solution uh, to to talk to customers and allow customers to talk to a carrier. They, there is a partnership that has been built there and uh, there really appears to be working nicely. So I think that's wonderful. And I think that's very important to make this whole thing work. I think an interesting thing, even in say the year timeframe from when we kind of started discussing this to now is it seemed like a year ago, the carriers uh, were kind of all kind of going down a, a kind of a channel instead of a path, a channel, but it seems, you know, at the present moment, the the carriers are down to specific paths now. They're starting to find their way. They know kind of which direction they want to go, and and we're we're starting to see the dust settle a little bit. And and what they choose to make their technology identity, uh, you know, let that be known going forward. So we're seeing more definition to the carrier's identity. Wouldn't you guys agree? Yes, I would absolutely agree with that. I think the carriers are really over the past year have been able to say wow, this is a huge world to, I know what my problem is. I know what I need to focus on first and really identify with that one solution. So, yeah. I think about our interview with Adam Kostecki, okay. which was still today is, is one of my favorite interviews. And I mean, full disclosure, we're big Adam Kostecki fans. And, but Adam kind of helped us to understand how innovation is happening inside of these carriers. And I think that when it started, and I'm going to maybe oversimplify this, but when it started, they were, it, it was cool to look at all these tools. Like remember years ago, one of our carrier customers had a showcase and they invited like 25 different insured tech companies right. to come talk to them. And everybody got 20 minutes or 45 minutes to make their pitch and and, and, and they all like shark tank. They, yeah, exactly. And they all went. And um, I think that innovation has become a much more thoughtful exercise and that many of these companies understand that insure tech is a piece of a broader goal of what they're trying to achieve. And that's to be more innovative, more thoughtful, uh, more technology advanced. How do they use these things to make their companies better? Not just how do we use something that's cool? Yeah, I very much agree with that. It makes me think a lot about Insured Tech Connect, right? We we went to Insured Tech Connect this year. This is my third year. And the size of the conference, right, is so much bigger than it was uh, three years ago. And you walk into that expo hall and you realize there's so many companies and all the carriers are trying to put all these pieces together to make the best business that they can. And I think that's what InsureTech is all about. It's all about really uh, creating these partnerships, uh, leveraging whatever they, they can uh, with, the, with the products that they have to really deliver the best solutions. 
but insured tech, right? That was a neat conference for us. Uh, I feel like I got a lot out of that. What did y'all think about insured tech this year? I thought it was outstanding. It was my first year, but I mean, certainly you set the expectations on what it, what it, you know, looked like. And, uh, it, of course it was bigger than it had ever been. Uh, I think it's exponentially grown every year and I, I was thoroughly impressed with it. The, the expo floor was a fascinating place to be with all the excitement and buzz around it. Well, I think if there's any one thing that you could point at as that, this is the answer to the question is insure tech important in our industry. You can point to that conference. Yeah, I would agree. That conference is, it's stunning. Everybody on, the three of us have been going to a variety of conferences for years and it, not a single one of them, insurance conferences, is as big, as dynamic, as exciting, as pertinent as that one is. And, and it's just a couple years old. It's like a tsunami. Right. right? I would say it is the the leading force behind insured tech, and I'm excited about their transition into Asia, uh, and and really getting a worldwide view on insured tech. I think next year, all the information that they're going to learn uh, is really going to help us even improve our American insured tech conference. And and we owe a big debt of gratitude to both Caribou Honig and Jay Weintraub for being supporters of our podcast being on our podcast. Yeah. And Caribou was one of our very first guests. Mm -hmm. He, he, he went out on a ledge and said, yes, when Rob asked mm -hmm. and really grateful to Caribou for that, that really set the, uh, insure tech podcast off on a great note. Right. I mean, here's a guy who's like considered one of the top five influencers in the insure tech world today. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said yes to us before we even had recorded an episode. So that yeah. was, uh, that was that remarkable. Was wonderful. How many times has Caribou been on three, three times now or just two? Two. And we're about to have him on a third. Cause we're going to do a, uh, look back episode, um, of insure tech 2019 yeah. and how that was kind of a wrap up, you know, you know, another, another group who really, um, believed in us at the beginning that allowed us to attend their conference was the exact where elevate conference. Uh, we were able to interview Mike Fulton right after his, his speech. Uh, and that was a really great time. It's a great interview. I, that's yeah. one of my favorites. It was very good. I remember sitting there and the, the hall was buzzing with people and he had just come off the stage and he was, uh, one of the kindest people I'd, I'd met in a long time. And he was very open and honest. And I thought that was a great, great interview. And I thought it was a great conference. That's a great conference that really brings uh, decision makers all into one place. Uh, that conference has really kind of become, as they say, the conference where business gets done. And I think that uh, that I'm very excited about it this coming year. I've seen a lot of uh, publicity already about that one. I'm a big Mike Fulton fan. I, I didn't really know him ahead of time. Right. He was he was just approachable and nice and he was honest yes. and straightforward. His team really facilitated us being there and and mm -hmm. and giving us the time we needed with him and stuff. It was a it was a nice conference and and a nice uh, takeaway to that we can do conferences right and right. It's a, it's an opportunity to 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 be in a a place with a lot of people that have a lot of thoughts right and and influence over our industry. Yeah, we love a good conference. Of course, Exactware is like the original insure tech. Right now, I mean, there's some who might argue with that, but. They, I, they've been around since the 90s, I think, early 90s, maybe late 80s. And so they've been pushing this technology agenda in the claims on the claims end of things for decades. I mean, they are the 800-pound gorilla on the claims side, but they've earned that. Right. Right. And Mike, I think, was very candid about that. You know, just one other thing I want to touch on real quick is the whole IoT thing. Like we had on Gabe Halimi mm -hmm. um, from Flow. Yeah. We had on Brett Jurgens from Notion. We had on um, Rule Peters. Thank you. With yeah, with Roost. R correct, and and now Kangaroo. I mean IoT. Yeah. Wow, hot, 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 hot. Yeah, I'm I'm excited because I remember whenever I first heard Gabe uh, a couple years ago at Introtech, it was this new thing, IoT, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I know that uh, you know Gabe has really done well with the company and his his new partnerships and uh, with with Moen. And very excited for him. And I'm very excited about the future state of IoT. 
uh, with companies like Roost and Notion and Kangaroo and how uh, insureds and insurance companies are going to be able to work with them, how the data is going to help you hopefully, right, lower premiums because uh, risk are being looked at closer. I think the future of IoT and the insurance is really what next year is going to be about. And we can't conclude our little episode here without talking about the explicit rating that we got on one of our, uh, it's true. right. It's yeah. true. I mean, one of my favorite, uh, interviews. Yeah. On the on edge. The edge. Yeah, she... FNO and sure tech is on the yes. edge. Wouldn't you guys yes. agree with that? I remember us having the discussion on whether we had to uh, edit out the explicit or we were going to let it ride. And, yeah. uh, I voted to I, let it ride. I think I we made was, a good choice. I thought it so. was a uh, poetic. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, um, Shout out yeah. to Carrie Ann Nadeau, the the only uh, explicit um, podcast that we have. Because um, Carrie Ann, to say Carrie Ann is passionate would, would be that an understatement. Fair. Is that she fair? Is a passionate person. One of my favorite people in the uh -huh. world of insure uh -huh. tech and and insurance. A, a, a marketer extraordinaire. Right. She, um, I I have a little uh, Carrie Ann Nadeau marketing shrine mm -hmm. up in my house. She's uh, terrific at what she does, and uh, and we thank you for the. Um, well, we'll just say it. Well, thank you, thank you for the f bomb. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. It really took us to a new level. I have to say, I mean, uh, looking down the list of of really what the previous forty nine episodes look like, you guys have done a really nice job at getting a really good cross section of the whole insurance ecosystem and our production team for making it all happen and lining it up. It's, yes. it's a lot of work and uh, you know, congratulations to you two guys. I don't, I'm not involved in that as much as you are, but it's, it's been a, uh, it's been a journey and it's been a good one. And I'm ultimately super impressed with the way we've been able to hit all the different segments. It's really a good cross section yeah. of, of our, of our industry. I think a lot of different companies. Yeah. One of the ratings that we have out there on on one of the different platforms, somebody said they're they're generous. They said we do a nice job. It's cross section, et cetera, and we and we we don't push too hard on the uh, self promotion side. Yeah. <laughs> but they mentioned that, and you know, I mean, we we really have kind of consciously tried to not push the fact that four seventy pays for us, right. And 470 is where we work and, and what 470 does. But I will say we are a claim management company and, and, and we handle property claims and we'd love your business. So don't get, don't get us wrong. Of course. But we do this on a bigger reason that we do this is because we want to share everything that that's going on and that we're doing. And we come from an industry that's always traditionally been very secret, closed, close to the vest. Yeah, I mean, I think the the question I get the most, why do you put some of your competitors on? Yeah. And the answer is, why not? I mean, first of all, neither group is going to talk about anything proprietary, but why not get their thoughts? I mean, we know some great people out there that we deal with in companies and compete with every day, and, and they have thoughts too, right? So, I mean, if you're going to look at the whole ecosystem, you got to you gotta have time to look at your competitors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look at it as this is our way uh, to give our part of the partnership, yeah. right? We're able to ask the questions. We're able to bring some knowledge uh, to the world of insure tech uh, because it is a partnership. That's that's what we we can do. That's what we set out. We set out and decided that we want to be uh, louder about insured tech, and we wanted to bring out the knowledge. And I think that I think we've done that because I think all three of us are convinced that we don't know where this is going to end. Or what it's going to look like in the end, right? But it's but everything that we're talking about is going to be much of what we're talking about is going to be very influential about where our industry is five years from now. Agreed, very much. I mean, it'll be super interesting to see what episode one hundred looks like, and yeah. what this mm -hmm. list looks like, and who's on it, and who comes back, and where their story is, right? And yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's certainly a commitment. Uh, it takes a lot of time to do this and thought and to do it right, but it's going to be interesting. The next, I think the next 50 will be pretty intriguing. And, and, and on that note, I, I want to say to all the 50 people who have been our guests or organizations that have helped us, there's been tremendous generosity, openness, and people have been willing. And I've, we've only had a couple people flat out say no to us. And only one, yeah. Yeah. only one person from the, in sure tech world has said no to us. 
some people have said, now's not the right time. Come back to me later. And when we did, they came on the podcast. So it's really a, it's a fun, open place to work. And that's funny because we didn't think that, right? Correct. We thought we were going to get yeah. tremendous pushback and yeah. and have difficulty scheduling, no. and it just has not been that at all. Yeah. Which is really, yeah. it's really a cool thing. Agreed. We just have to when when we want to have a carrier on, you have to schedule them out four months so it can go through legal. Yeah, it'll it'll take a little bit of time and IT departments and right. all that kind of stuff. Right. So the fun stuff, all those fun departments. Right, because so. we learned with with carriers that so once you get that once you go through the four months and you get the permission. Then you get on and they have a firewall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you go to, you finally have this episode that you've been trying to get to for months and you, everybody's on and you start to record and they can't download um, our, our platform. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. I, I'm excited to hear from our guest, right? Y'all have listened to a lot of episodes. Some of you 50 episodes. What have you learned? What are you interested? We'd love to hear from you. Right. Are we I taking call ins right now or something? Yeah, that would be great. Call in 1 800 oh wait. But you can email us, and that's at FNO insuredtech.com. We have a great website. Uh, any episodes we've talked about today that you've missed, you can go on and, and find them. But, you know, email us. Let us know. Yeah. We'd love to hear. What are, what are we missing? Are yeah. we missing the segment? Or, yeah. What, is, what have know. we not done uh -huh. that you wish we would have? Uh -huh. what, uh, what, what technologies or areas of technologies have we not touched on? Because, uh, like we said, it's vast. There's plenty that 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 we haven't gone to yet. Right. Like we've really not we've really not g gone deep into AI yet, which is so important. Yeah, just very little. Although, although AI is involved in many of the many of the companies, like like Planner and Augmented Reality. But yeah, um, yeah we'll have more on that. It's coming. Be patient. Be patient. And yeah. for Matt, for Matt, we're going to try to be we're going to try to have more fun. And try to be funny or fun, not please. boring. That's Matt's, yeah, Matt's big complaint about our podcast is it's boring. Don't be boring. Don't you gotta be, be boring. You got to be excited, memorable, right? Memorable. So memorable. Yeah. So I, I feel like there have been some memorable moments. Some we can't talk about. <laughs> some. some we can't talk about. A lot of them off air. A lot of them are on the editing room floor. Yeah, we can't talk about the ones that you don't have pants on when you're yeah. doing or anything like that. Yeah, so that's it. see, that's not. We can't yeah. talk about that. We can't talk about those. <laughs> that was I, a that was a original idea. That yeah, we should do the podcast without pants. Well, I was auditioning for <laughs> naked and podcasting. <laughs> oh, I hope you didn't make it. Good. I did not make it. <laughs> oh, that did not happen. It's a good way I to did lose. not make it. It's a good way to lose. Some venture capitalist is out yeah. there right now going, yeah, I'll invest in yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, naked in podcasting. Watch for it on A and E. <laughs> and I, I'm sorry, Rob, but I, I thought you were going to be actually in the headquarters today. We have a little 50th uh, podcast party afterwards yeah. uh, oh, with all the staff yeah. and everything. And yeah, I ice sculptures. I, I think you're uh, with uh, ice sculptures. I, yeah, ice yeah. sculptures. Sorry, so, sorry, sorry. You can't be a part of that. I, in I my likeness. Be in, so uh, in my likeness. Yeah, sure. Character likeness. Yes. Um, well, so, you know, but we'll take some photos and send them to you. It's, I'll just it's say the same this. Thing. And maybe I should think about this. It wouldn't be the first time that there's a party at 470 in Waco and I wasn't invited. Okay, there I said it. Not the first <laughs> you did. time. You did say it. You did say that. I'll back you up. That's probably true. That's Not okay. we'll, the first time. We'll put you on FaceTime. You're good. You'll be, it's, like you're, it's like you're here. Same thing. So, Same and thing. listen, the number one big thank you has to go out to our audience, our listeners. Right. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you tolerate us, you put up with us, you show us, you give us your time, which we know is valuable and your interest. And we love doing this and we want to hear from you. So yeah, big um, thank you. Big, big thank, thank you. you. So that does it. Thanks for being with us for our 50th. I hope that this intrigues you to maybe go back to some of our episodes and listen to them if you've missed them and to look forward to what's coming next. Uh, uh, last thank you goes to Matt Fothery for putting up with us, being willing to put up the money and the, and um, the time and the effort uh, to make it happen. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Yeah, Matt. it's uh, it's been a good thing. I uh, wonder where y'all are sometimes, and y'all are always over here in the recording booth. But uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, I think uh, time well spent. That's going to be the only time I say that. So I guess it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I guess we it's got, being recorded now. We got it recorded. Man, uh, take that back. We'll edit that out. Yeah. Okay, and thanks to Al and Alicia for all their work and the and the things that they do. They're our production team. Until the next time. What do we say? What do we say, Ali? Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>